good afternoon. Thank you, Gabriele, uh, dear colleagues. Um, our situation, uh, as Gabriele told us, it was uh, uh, to speak about the experiences in our countries on the development of the uh, EWCs uh, very briefly because uh, we're late. Of course, it's not my intention to add anything more to what uh, was uh, greatly com commented on by Massimo Gianluca and Volker and the collaborators of the project. Um, this morning we were saying that uh, during this short session uh, we uh, should bring our viewpoint on this uh, topic. Uh, the viewpoint of our trade unions with reference to the functions of communication and uh, consultation on, within the EWCs. We haven't progressed much within this criterion or at the desired level or at the desired speed. Uh, it's not that uh, it's not to, well, the trade unions are not to blame. Uh, not for UGT, but we are uh, being crushed by reality. Uh, we believe that, wait, no, no problem. There's no problem. I'm going to speak anyway. I'll continue speaking and we will uh, show the presentation on the screen if we can. If we can't, I'll keep on talking. During the period uh, of the tr uh, reception of the uh, directive, there was a slowdown or a stop. Uh, not well, we are going slow in the EWC setting up or also uh, in their functioning. We believe, and I am convinced, and my uh, colleagues from the committee can share this with me, I think that there is an automatization of uh, meetings that does not favor the objectives uh, that we are looking for with reference to the EWCs. We need, and that was uh, the conclusion by Volker, and I think that we all uh, are, are agree, uh, the trans-sector, uh, cross-sector uh, federations and uh, trade union strategies to build synergies and to uh, enable us to uh, be, to inform and to give an answer to the problems or the challenges of uh, an enterprise that uh, want to enterprises that want to escape from the responsibilities of their country of origin to look for markets or labor or uh, legislative situations that are um, convenient for them and uh, this the example is uh, the uh, well, the uh, Bangladesh uh, um, events are um, an, ev an example of this and uh, so the uh, the corp an event such as this was uh, uh, well the, the corporation uh, where we, we want to obtain uh, more refined mechanisms in order for corporations to sign documents uh, to uh, for better conditions. The uh, Mumia project we are part of, I think that uh, the strategy is uh, good and perfectly tuned in, and the analysis and, re and reports are shared because we all, we participated too. Very rapidly with reference to the PowerPoint that we prepared, it was a compendium of what, of the situation in Spain. We uh, talked about the directive, we wanted to uh, clarify the situation in Spain a bit in our trade union movement in Spain still and this is something that uh, the trade union uh, people we are trying to uh, push on the we are uh, making efforts uh, to uh, progress in this and the representatives of uh, workers uh, are, have difficulties in understanding the potential of this institution and uh, we get a 
cold shoulder uh, within trade unions for these uh, topics. I had put in the slides some findings that are official data for 2012 that are correct in Europe. 100% out of 100%, 34.8% uh, of the EWCs could be uh, set up, and in Spain, uh, the, the 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 it's a, a, about half. So in Spain, uh, we uh, have progress to make. Of course, it's true that the effects of the crisis uh, are stopping us and they are uh, engaging us in something that is more clo it's closer to the labor interest in our country. It's not a criticism, but it's a, a reality, everyday, uh, an everyday challenge that, uh, and, and these uh, meetings can be very useful. Uh, in Spain, the, you, we know, you know the data of the economic crisis in Spain. Uh, governments are adopting measures to attack the rights of workers and consequently they attack the rights or the trade union possibilities or trade union rights uh, as well and this uh, undoubtedly is going to translate into the EWC to transfer it to the EWCs and their activities in our country the industrial sector that usually uh, where, where EWCs were strong, strong on are losing their presence and we have an entrepreneurial structure that is diluting and um, in terms of w with uh, outsourcing strategies and to get rid of uh, business units. So this is a very uh, great difficulty for us. In Spain, we have a, a very slow collective bargaining. Um, this is a, an additional difficulty that will have repercussions also uh, on the creation of uh, the EWCs or the setting up of the EWCs. Um, because they are born from our own trade union representatives that are uh, within the collective bargaining. We have a weakening of trade union organizations. We need to strengthen ourselves and to be supported uh, by the industrial uh, federations. And <coughs> my federation is participating in uh, the uh, commerce sector, and we're going to try to continue working there. And we also have some weaknesses that I uh, would like to underline, namely the weakening that is uh, taking place in the uh, national uh, reality, in the national framework of trade union movements. And this forces us to retreat towards our country and to defend our own spaces for collective bargaining and to defend simple issues such as uh, trade union rights. And I think that uh, the there is the dispersion of initiatives in terms of, of international uh, trade union confederation. We need to build the, the, the trade union units. We do not have trade union strength. Uh, uh, Volker uh, just said uh, the difficult about the difficulties to set up uh, in EWC and to reach the final results. Uh, we uh, have a very uh, loose interpretation of the directive, and those who participate know that we discuss it regularly, uh, despite that, uh, uh, despite the law, the fact that the law uh, safeguards us. As the entrepreneurs do not comply with this in um, information rights of the trade union representatives, we are uh, seeing this uh, as a reality. Well, we believe that it's necessary to strengthen EWCs and to strengthen 
these tools. Here too, and this is something that I believe is also important, very important, namely the uh, global framework agreement, agreements uh, should be synchronized uh, with the EWCs. We are seeing that often European companies are running away from Europe and are uh, locating themselves in uh, Asia and South America, and this is a challenge that we might have in the future. The trade unions and and, uh, and in our countries, we will have the minimum representation of these uh, corporations. We uh, need mechanisms such as Mumia is doing the web page where we have an exchange of national reports and to see national uh, situations. We also need. move very rapidly in terms of training, information, and qualification of EWCs. It's uh, an urgent need because often we are finding difficulties in doing so. And then, in my opinion, we need trade union strategies to that, that respond to very general interests and we should run away from our vested interests, uh, trade union interests. Uh, we were talking about the time that it takes to set up EWCs. We, uh, in Spain, we have an example with a hotel chain, and uh, after four years, we uh, uh, were unable to set up an EWC, and, the ch and, and this had, has had consequences in in the whole of Europe. We uh, have a sort of trade union depression, but we should uh, escape from this. Where we should uh, improve the situation uh, by contributing uh, each one for this country. Um, uh, I believe, and uh, Gabriele will understand, we designed the, uh, this slide, EWCs cannot function without the strengthening uh, with reference to information and consultation mechanism. This mechanism is very clear here. We want to strengthen this mechanism, and we are trying to uh, give our own contribution through MAMIA, and this is very important and necessary to survive in trade union terms and I can conclude by saying to you that we believe that the reality that these uh, borders are overcome, uh, well, we unfortunately, we are seeing that uh, this is a reality that is uh, present and uh, our rights are in danger. Uh, Gabriele, my last slide, this is a circle. It's not a vicious circle. It's a virtual cycle uh, with reference to the EWC and the activity that should be channeled in expressing the information functions, the consultation for uh, functions, and it would strengthen the uh, trade unions, the EWCs, and it's something that enterprise entrepreneurs cannot recognize, but it would give them their enterprises value added. and. I don't want to uh, steal uh, much more time. Our contributions and our ideas are going to be present in our final documents, and you will be able to see them more uh, uh, at ease. I don't know whether I was able to convey the message well, but uh, I think that we designed a good project uh, with good goals, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Emilio. I'm not going to make any comments. Uh, the problem that we have now is that we don't have much time. So I would like to ask uh, the following speaker, uh, Ellen, for example, uh, and I ask them to be very brief because we have less than 15 minutes, 15 minutes for all of you, Helen. Buongiorno a tutti. Good morning to everyone. My name is Hélène. I work in the food sector 
and I'm uh, in charge of the EWCs in Europe. I want to first of all express my satisfaction for being here because we hear about Europe that's uh, not doing well. So, but to see this nice hall gathered around European project is always very, enthusi very exciting. To get into the subject right away, right away, I think that all the points were addressed, positive and negative. So very quickly to uh, observe this timing. I just want to present one example, one example that I ran into recently in the sector where I work. It's the Actalis. Actalis is an, imp is an enterprise that is installed at the same time in France, Italy, and Spain. So I'm going to address the first step of this uh, installation of the EWC. I'm just going to talk about the setup. I'd like to explain the fact that there's already an initiative on the part of Spain who managed to uh, collect 100 uh, signatures to ask for the uh, setup of the CWC. This initiative was followed by a letter, a letter from the union and initiative in Spain, a common letter addressed to the to the management. And this happened a year ago, and we still have no specific result, no response from management. We add to this the fact that Italians uh, uh, are pressuring, uh, be, um, applying pressure because there's a real need to establish this EWC. So based on this example, that is more a um, statement rather than uh, an example. I think that it is time with respect to this specific case to gather our energies and establish some uh, strategies around this uh, this case because uh, we could also mention other cases like Sonor, Belvedere, but how can we all organize to apply pressure all together on these uh, enterprises to accelerate the setup and the establishment of uh, EWCs? It's not even about accelerating, it's about achieving specific results. Maybe we can uh, discuss this issue a little more precisely tomorrow with others and among others. That's why I wanted to close with this uh, question. Thank you. Thank you, Helen, because of the for the questions, but also for your brevity. I don't know if uh, if he can uh, stay within three minutes, but I'll ask him to be able to do it. Thank you, Gabriel. I'll try to observe these three minutes, and I'm sure I will achieve it. Well, first of all, hello, good afternoon. I want to thank Philcoms, CGL, and Philcoms represented by, Gre by Gabriel for this uh, Mumia project that I consider to be of vital importance for the defense of the rights of our workers in Europe at the companies they uh, work at especially the cultural ones. Of course, thank you to all the companions who have uh, made up this uh, round table, this working table, who allowed me to understand that the support and union among different colleagues is very important to achieve objectives and successes, and that will allow to drive this European development based on Mumia and coordination with among the different um, unions. Ever since the European Directive came into force, precisely the Community Letter of the Fundamental Rights of the Workers and the international treaties of the European Union, such as the Directive 2009-38 that we've already mentioned, the entry into force of this European directive is supposed, presupposed the achievement of one of the intentions with largest scope in the European policy, because I think that it's trying to channel two problems that had not been overcome and that we still have uh, a long way, a lot of work to do about. On the one hand, the concentration of companies that is being accelerated through the consolidation of the European uh, only state, and on the other hand, the participation of workers 
to these groups of companies. These uh, restructurings in the way of a company organization is very quick and they are causing the entrepreneurial organizations to uh, catch up so we don't so we're not left behind this uh, creation of EWCs is not an easy task and we face many difficulties not just the company difficulties which are of course already exposed Gabriel and Gianluca also referred to the different difficulties that we have within our own European federations to which the union representatives of each com country belong to to give you an example to be brief my company has unions allowing to the ATF the European Federation of Transport etc we firstly must uh, place the federations in agreement in order to initiate a process for an EWC. We started in April of 2010 requesting information about what we needed to do to start. We did not receive this authorization until January 2011. After this, there's a process that I had prepared, but I will not give you details and maybe on some other occasion, I can develop some of these aspects and issues, especially the, uh, uh, the formation of the trade union uh, delegates of European committees. These are important aspects, which from the beginning of the life of a special group uh, for the achievement of, of a European committee must be in place. As I said, it's been a very long process. We've, it's taken us several months. In 2011, I managed to have the French CGT along with us, France and Spain. We managed to present an application and the company, and it took the company six months to set up the first meeting, and that means it took us to February 2012. At present, we have not anticipated to complete the negotiations for this creation of this committee until March or June 2014. Maybe at some other point we can speak more at length of all these problems and all the steps we've taken. Uh, this has cost me more than 500 emails and I continue working to manage to coordinate all the aspects. I just want to thank you all for being here. And I want to encourage you to this uh, coordination and collaboration among European uh, unions, with, uh, which I think is going to be fundamental, and the participation to this pro project to achieve what I said, what this, what this project wants, improving the life of our workers. Thank you. Thank you, Serafin. I would have not bet on it. I have to ask Dennis for a favor. I saw his presentation. Unfortunately, we have no time to listen to it all. I would ask you. I'll start again. Dennis's presentation is very interesting. I know it, but it's very long. We cannot uh, hear it all at this time. I will ask him if he can summarize it in several, in a few minutes, and then tomorrow we'll see if we have time to show it entirely. In the meantime, I'd like to tell Dennis that we have in this hall the two Italian representatives of the EWC of uh, IKEA, Christian Nicoletti and Bianca Marinari, who is there. The experience of IKEA is very interesting. Buonasera. Hello, everybody. I'm Denis Aktogan from Kopish Union from Turkey. Um, we have a long presentation. It is always uh, difficult to speak the last person in the meetings. Of course, uh, I will summarize uh, in a few minutes. You know, Turkey is a, not a member of European Union, so we cannot represent on behalf of our unions in European Work Council. 
Sì. And first of all, we are very happy to be here in Florence in Italy with our colleagues. And uh, we came here with the three people. Our president is here, our national secretary is here. And uh, my union is uh, represents commercial workers. So uh, we are partner of this project to organizing at IKEA stores in Turkey. So we have very big struggle in Turkey organizing at IKEA and of course companies union busting in IKEA Turkey stores and they are treating, they are forcing workers to resign from union. So anyway, uh, I will start. If we had time, I would uh, try to explain the general situation of the Turkish labor, but uh, I hope the next time. Uh, we started to organize at IKEA stores in 2010, and after that, the company, IKEA Turkey, started to pressure on workers to resign from union. In Turkey, the company is a franchisee company, so it is not IKEA's own stores. So IKEA say that we are not IKEA, we are the franchisee company, so we don't, are, we don't responsible for the unlawful terminations. So the joining to the union or pressure, the, who had already joined the union, the company pressure the workers to leave from the union. If a worker didn't uh, accept company's suggestion, that time the management easily can uh, dismiss the workers. And a company refused to start a dialogue with the union. And they fired some of the workers and we made the sweet reinstatement cases are going on. And the company visit the workers' homes, call the workers' family members to threat them and some of the workers are resigned from union. And in Turkey, the worker has to go to notary to join union or to leave from union. And we have lots of documents, resigned documents from union, which they didn't join union before. So the company forced workers to resign. They ask, do you member of union? The workers say no okay, I don't believe you, you should also resign from union. So it is very uh, difficult situation in Turkey now. And our union is member of this project, partner of this project, so uh, we, had, we made a seminar in Istanbul last year. The seminar was very successful and we explained our information which we received here to our members. We made some different meetings in different cities about the project and uh, we, we made big profit of this uh, project and our union is very uh, glad to join this uh, project. And uh, as I said, uh, we have also our union IKEA aliens. So all the IKEA unions from all around the world, they come together in Istanbul last year and they created their own aliens. And next week in Stockholm, we will make a meeting with the Uni IKEA Global Union Aliens. So from different countries, different union representatives will come together to to create a strong cooperation. And we are speaking here to say to you that Turkey and the Turkish unions need more collaboration, needs more support from different neighbor countries. And we think that the partners of this project and the people who are in this conference room you are friends of us and we would like to create more connection, more collaboration with you and we suggest to do more projects together. 
And so uh, I can stop here. Thank you very much for all. Yeah. Thank you, Dennis. As you may have understood, the organization is also connected to the uh, uh, weather. The weather conditions is very fluid, so we have modifications. We've just been told that Ulise Garrido will probably not make it tomorrow either in the first part of the morning. So maybe we'll just move his uh, speech towards the end of the morning. And maybe Ulises will never, will not arrive. So we'll send him uh, so some uh, written questions and he'll send us uh, written answers. Anyhow, now I would suggest to a few of you to relax for a moment in the sense that we had anticipated the intervention of um, other companions present at this meeting, they're not all here. At this point, we can move some addresses to tomorrow. I would ask, I would ask if Pal Kovac is, uh, agrees, uh, since he has a presentation, to present Pal's uh, presentation on this uh, Hungarian experience about this issue, and then Kul will cue, will close the meeting prior to the coffee break to then resume with a round table with Pet and Homek. So there's a slight change, the possibility for some to uh, have their address tomorrow. If Pal agrees, I would ask him to speak now. Are you ready? So good afternoon. My name is Paul representing Hungary. And uh, I uh, should like to summarize the story of uh, the Hungarian work uh, councils in the past. Uh, yeah? So uh, in the late uh, 90s, we have a representative of EFAT uh, sitting in Budapest and helping us uh, to, to know how does it work in uh, Europe. Uh, the name was Ildiko Kren, and she was supported by EFAT, and she helped uh, my union with the tourism union in Budapest to join uh, and to, to uh, follow the uh, European Work Council's uh, work. Uh, we had observatory status uh, by the ACOR, Intercontinental, Hilton, Sodexo, Corinthia, Everest, Compass, uh, till 2004, when Hungary joined, uh, became member of the EU. But uh, after uh, this uh, date, uh, we were surprised <laughs> very quickly that uh, the observatory seat uh, was not available for, uh, for Hungarians in the different uh, European work councils, so we started to, to uh, deal with uh, different companies to have a fixed uh, seat uh, on the consultative forums, but it was not always success successful. As uh, we, were, uh, we were told that the uh, franchise uh, companies or franchise hotels uh, don't have the, the right to, to take part uh, on the job and so on and so on. Now we have uh, this uh, transnational uh, companies working in, in Hungary and uh, 
and uh, there is non, no any Hungarian representations in, in those work council you can read on the slide. And uh, there are two big Hungarian-owned uh, transnational companies. One is my company, Danubis Hotels, uh, representing uh, 54 hotels in five European countries, uh, England, uh, Czech Republic, uh, Slovakia, Romania, and Hungary. But uh, the ownership uh, denied uh, to organize uh, any European work council with, uh, with uh, different tricks. You can imagine this. And the, the second uh, biggest Hungarian hotel chain is Hungas Hotels with uh, its uh, 24 hotels. But uh, because of the very complicated ownership, uh, it is not possible to organize any work uh, council. Uh, Sodexo is the only uh, European company which, uh, which has a Hungarian seat or Hungarian representation in the European Work Council. It works well. So, uh, in my union, uh, sometimes the representative of uh, Sodexo uh, make presentation about uh, this uh, project. Junior is the second biggest uh, uh, company, but uh, they don't have any activity. And the rest uh, and Compass, you know, uh, they left Hungary a couple of years ago in the late uh, 90s but they came back uh, two years ago, or three years ago, I don't know, uh, with a very new model, but uh, uh, the representative or, or union representative is still not available, not e existing. Uh, the major problem in Hungary is because uh, the big change in the ownership patterns of, of the companies. So, Maybe everybody knows that uh, Hilton uh, was uh, bought by Blackstone a couple of years ago. And uh, since uh, the new owner works, consultative forum doesn't exist anymore. So we don't know anything about uh, this job. Akkor, it's a, it's a special Hungarian problem. Akkor work, council works very well, but uh, the Hungarian uh, part is, is a very bad story. The trade union of uh, the Accor group was uh, bought by the management, which means uh, they got uh, a lot of money, uh, and uh, that's why they went out of uh, my union, and, uh, and we tried to renew our, our uh, relationship with this uh, Company Union, we asked the help of uh, Patrick of, from the IUF. He visited uh, the Hungarian Accor group three times. We had meetings, but it was totally unsuccessful, so Accor deleted the Hungarian seat uh, under the European Work Council. Intercontinental uh, was bought uh, by an, an secret company, <laughs> there is no any information who is the real owner, so it's, it's a very strange situation. So, uh, Corinthia, do you know Corinthia, which is a uh, company based in Malta, ownership is, uh, is uh, dark, you know, some Libyan money, it, it was very close to Gaddafi and so on, so they, they have uh, two hotels uh, today in, in Hungary. Uh, our colleague uh, who is uh, with us in the Union tried to, to set up an European Work Council, but uh, the head, headquarter totally denied it. Uh, so it was uh, something similar what uh, our Turkish colleague explained. So uh, we also um, see some obstacles uh, why we are not able to setting up uh, European work councils in Hungary. 
sometimes we have problems with the very sophisticated ownership situations. Uh, sometimes owners, uh, owners are denying to organize anything. Uh, complicated labor contracts. Uh, can you imagine NH hotels, for example? Uh, this is two two person, the GM and the front office manager is. Uh, is an H employer, and the, the other workers are outsourced. Totally, uh, totally different situation. And uh, the major problem, I suppose, is the workers' uninterested attitude, not uh, only for the uh, European work councils, but uh, for the union as well. Uh, informations, uh, I. I suppose the legal background of this uh, information side is all right in Hungary. We have uh, a very uh, useful labor law which uh, makes free the information about companies. Uh, everything is public and you can check everything on the internet. And uh, all citizens uh, can register itself on, on the Ügyfél Kapu, which is a, which is a, a public uh, portal uh, organized by the government, so, so you can check uh, whatever you want about your, your company. So that was my story about the Hungarian situation. Thanks. You for Okay, I saw a show of hands, so I think I now have to conclude. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Koen Dries, I'm a National Officer for the ICT in the media sector in uh, Belgium, in LBC. Um, uh, I would honestly uh, want to thank, before I start, the, the involvement of Philcoms for setting up the Mumia project in the enormous investment. I think uh, when you saw the results, the fact that half of the questionnaires have been filled out in Italy says something about the uh, extra effort that uh, Philcoms have put into to the project, which I'm very happy for. Uh, and also explains that, uh, unfortunately, let's say that we uh, were less able to contribute than, than we thought because of the, the problems we discussed during the presentation on national issues sometimes pushing off the international agenda, although it shouldn't, because we are for the moment in Belgium facing probably the most direct, the most massive, and the most unreasonable attack on, on workers' rights uh, since the last, let's say, even since the Second World War, uh, uh, where there seems to be a political <coughs> consensus amongst all political families that we should uh, all give in all kinds of basic rights, while uh, apparently only trade unions, regardless of politics, seem to be the only organizations in Belgium that actually think that you have to be able to make a decent living and live properly when you work for your wages. But, uh, that, that's put beside. Uh, uh, we have to refocus again on the international issues. Um, when I first thought this intervention uh, was going to be some uh, explanations, on, uh, maybe as um, one of the experience in the projects on the HP case, but that's all that Volker already commented some of the aspects and that apparently there was a very lengthy document explaining all details on the HP attempt for coordination and the slight fight with management about that uh, on the website soon. So. Um, I might skip that seeing the timing, uh, and I got the slight hint uh, from Gabriele that I might conclude with some general thoughts on uh, how I live this conference until now and the conclusions I see there. Uh, and I must say, when, when I just put aside all practical experience, and we can discuss that later on in, in the conference and what we live through, uh, when I see the presentations of uh, Massimo and, and Volker, uh, we had discussions this morning in the uh, steering committee, and I see my own experience in the media sector, the, the ICT sector, and, and I hear other colleagues talking about their experiences in, in um, EWCs and trying to set up EWCs, which fortunately we seem to be slightly more successful for the moment than, than in other sectors, uh, which is not that difficult. If there's nothing there, then you can grow rapidly, then we already have something, and that's a matter of statistics. Eh? Um, when I look to all that, I'm, I'm actually wondering whether our real challenge is not uh, a paradox that I'm looking at. Eh? 
I think if I look to the conclusions of the uh, presentation Volker made, I can completely concur with the conclusions on what the challenges are that we have to meet if we want to organize multi-sectoral uh, companies and how to have to coordinate between the national level, the international level, even nationally we have to try to coordinate between trade unions, between members, non-members, uh, with the European Union federations coordinating among themselves, with the confederations, you see it's, it's a very complicated landscape and apparently we're all talking about how to uh, coordinate why we still believe we have the same common goal, so there, there has to be something wrong there. Uh, and I saw the presentations, Volker started with the strengths, huh, with the challenges, and I thought, yeah, there's a classical SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, uh, opportunities, and threats. Yeah? And I think there we have actually on those multinational companies uh, a SWOT trade union paradox that we have to solve. And it's maybe some thought, I don't want to force the conference to go in there, but I would be very happy to hear your thoughts about that, and whether that's not the real challenge we are facing. Yeah? Uh, if you look to those companies that we're representing, uh, and whether you talk about it, that's something apparently I saw in the presentations, on the national level between trade unions, on the international level between European trade union federations, or between the national and international level, the same paradox seems to reappear as far as I see. That is basically that where trade unions are strong or well organized, it seems to be much easier to get a decent result and to have a proper negotiation with management and to actually go somewhere but it seems to be incredibly hard to coordinate, to leave your national or your sectorial position and to actually uh, be very open for new structures, new methods of work, adapting to the company structure and openly cooperate with other people because you're strong. And that seems to weaken our possibilities there. And if I look to the ICT or the media sector in the sectors where apparently trade unions are weak and where it is very difficult to come to a decent agreement with management that sometimes are very aggressive towards trade union and social dialogue, and where you don't have a strong trade union base, apparently the lack of strong trade union base seems to make it incredibly easy to coordinate, to overcome the difference between the trade union federations and to overcome the national differences, uh, which then again strengthens you. And so maybe a thought for the continuation of the conference, if we look to the analysis of Volker, isn't one of our challenges not that we have to overcome this, if it exists, if I'm the only one who sees it, then it's my problem, of course, uh, overcome this SWOT trade union paradox, and that we have to, to look how, where we are strong, we can actually coordinate and cooperate and do better because we want to work together and we want to overcome our national differences and everything, and that that can be an example for the situations where we are weak and that where we are strong we can learn in how the sectors where trade unions are weak actually cooperate. But maybe with that thing, Gabriele, when I had to finish according to my last instructions with a philosophical thought, that might be the one to think about for the next few hours. Grazie, Kuhn. Thank you. This is one of the tests. I mean, even in difficulties with these uh, changes in difficulties, the, the, lack, the Italian lack of organization manages to survive anyhow. But the nice thing is that the uh, lack of organization and fantasy is not only Italian, because Kung is everything except for Italian. Look at how well he came out of this. <laughs> 